402 correspondents from many nations gather at the State Department in Washington, D.C. to attend President John F. Kennedy's news conference. Here on April 21st, 1961, is President Kennedy's 10th question and answer meeting with the press. Gentlemen, I have several announcements to make. I know that many of you have further questions about Cuba. I made a statement on that subject yesterday afternoon. We are continuing consultations with other American republics. Active efforts are being made by ourselves and others in behalf of various individuals, including any Americans who may be in danger. I do not think that any useful national purpose would be served by my going further into the Cuban question this morning. I prefer to let my statement of yesterday suffice for the present. I am pleased to announce that the United States has offered concrete support to a broad-scale attack by the United Nations on world hunger. I've instructed the Food for Peace director to offer $40 million in food commodities towards an initial United Nations reserve of $100 million. This will be administered by the United Nations Food and Agricultural Operation. I am informed that other United Nations members will also make similar contributions. The food will then be used to relieve hunger and to improve nutrition in underdeveloped countries of the world. Our participation in this project will complement rather than diminish our existing Food for Peace program. Third, I'm pleased to announce that the Veterans Administration will pay a special insurance dividend of $230 million and the decision made this morning to approximately 5 million holders of GI life insurance beginning July 1st. These uh, dividends have been speeded up in order to assist the economy. And lastly, I'm pleased to announce that the Peace Corps is proceeding with its first project at the request of the government of Tanganyika, an African country that will gain its first independence on December 28th, the Peace Corps will send to that country a party of surveyors, geologists, and civil engineers to help Tanganyika's own technicians map and construct roads. 20 surveyors, four geologists, and four civil engineers will provide some of the skills needed to accelerate the development plan. There's nothing more important in Tanganyika than development of roads to open up the country, and I'm delighted that uh, some Americans have volunteered to help in this important effort. Can you tell us anything about your talk with Vice President Nixon last night? I brought, uh, Vice President came to the White House at my invitation, and I uh, informed him of, uh, brought him up to date on the events of the past uh, few days. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President, can you tell us the status of the mid-April economic review you promised? Yes, I uh, stated at a previous conference at the, at the end of uh, or mid-April, I think 75 days, we were going to uh, undertake a review of the economy. That is now uh, underway under the direction of Dr. Heller. And uh, I hope when that uh, survey is completed that we will have a uh, statement to make on it. Uh, quite respecting your <coughs> feeling of not going beyond your statement of yesterday on Cuba, uh, there still is in print this morning a uh, quite widely distributed published report that you took the decision to continue training Cuban refugees with arms provided by this government and for releasing ships and fuel for launching the current operations in Cuba. And furthermore, this report says that you reached this decision against the advice of Secretary Rusk and Mr. Bowles. Now, is this true? I think that uh, the uh, facts of the matter uh, involving uh, the Cuban will uh, come out in due time. Uh, and I'm sure that an effort will be made to determine the facts accurately. As for me, I'm confining myself to my statement. For good reason. Uh, yeah? uh, this is not a question about Cuba, it's a question about Castro. Uh, <laughs> could you tell us whether any intelligence that you have received 
can shed any light on the reports that the Prime Minister has been incapacitated, uh, that he has not been heard from since Monday or Tuesday, or uh, uh, reports to that effect? No, I, I cannot. Only I saw some, uh, I think reference was on the ticket this morning that uh, Mr. Castro was seeing some members of the press today, so I suppose we will have a better idea of that uh, later on. Mr. President. Ms. Craig. Uh, Mr. President, the leaders of House and Senate Republicans told us yesterday at press conference that they are setting up special study committees on the effect of automation and technological improvements in agriculture as well as industry. Are you hoping that your Democrats in Congress will set up similar study committees? Do you need them? Well, I do think that on the uh, subcommittee on labor, a committee, uh, subcommittee headed by Congressman Hollander of uh, Pennsylvania has been conducting uh, studies on the effect of automation for some months. In regard to the effect of automation on uh, agriculture, I think it is uh, some of our most, the most serious uh, problems which have arisen in agriculture have been because of uh, research combined with automation, which have brought an extraordinary increase in production with far less uh, manpower. So that I know that this problem is a uh, matter of uh, substantial concern to all of us. I'm glad that the Republicans are conducting this study because I think all the attention we can get by both parties into what I consider to be a genuine national problem, automation, what happens to the people who are thrown out of work, I think will be most useful. And uh, agriculture, where we have a great increase in production with around four million people less than we had several years ago, some years ago. In many ways, it's one of the most extraordinary and admirable facets of uh, our national life. I think it's unfortunate that we're not able to bring it more to the attention of the world where so many people, including in the Soviet Union and in China, are spending most of their time on subsistence agriculture, that we're able to have this extraordinary production with very few people. But like all, uh, blessings, they bring problems with them, and I'm glad they're conducting the study. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, at your last news conference, you expressed hope that the Soviets would agree within a few days to a ceasefire in Laos. More than a week has gone by since then, and the Soviets have not agreed yet. Could you tell us how much longer you uh, will wait before contemplating other kind of action? I understand that the British and the Soviets uh, are conferring at the present time, using it in a general sense, and uh, we are hopeful that a ceasefire can be obtained in Laos. President, President, uh, we continue to be hopeful. Yeah. Mr. Nixon, on the uh, Ev and Charlie show yesterday, said that he was going to give you 10 days grace to uh, produce on your campaign promises that certain things would be done by 90 days. Did he go into this or other uh, domestic politics in your White House meeting? No, uh, there was nothing. Uh, stated about uh, on uh, politics. Uh, Mr. Nixon and I discussed uh, matters of uh, national concern, and uh, it was done in a wholly uh, non-political way. Mr. Nixon's response was uh, most helpful. Mr. President, Mr. President uh, I wonder if you would tell us what, uh, <laughs> what your grounds, your investigations of the uh, Major General Wa Ted Walker incident in Europe, if you will please tell us what grounds you found for relieving him of his command for allegedly teaching troops anti-communist doctrine? I, uh, when I saw the stories in regard to uh, the uh, things which uh, had been said, or at least alleged to have been said in regard to General Walker, I called Secretary McNamara and asked him to investigate it. Secretary McNamara then, I believe, suspended uh, General Walker and my term may not be precise, pending a completion of the investigation, but no decision has been made in regard to General Walker until the investigation has been completed to find out uh, exactly what uh, was going on. I do not believe that Secretary McNamara took even that limited action, however, merely because he felt that General Walker was teaching, uh, talking against the communists. That was not the grounds for concern. But no final decision, to the best of my information, has been made on the matter of General Walker. He will be given every opportunity, and those who have been critical of him will be given every opportunity to present 
uh, their uh, case. And a final decision will then be made uh, by uh, Mr. McNamara, who will then bring the matter to my attention, and I will then uh, review it. Mr. President. Without uh, prejudice to General Walker. Mr. President. Mr. President. Oh, yes, excuse me. Sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, you uh, don't seem to be uh, uh, pushing the space program nearly as energetically now as you suggested during the campaign that you thought it should be pushed uh, in view of uh, the uh, feeling of many people in this country that we must uh, do everything we can to catch up with the Russians as soon as possible. Uh, do you anticipate uh, uh, applying uh, uh, any sort of uh, crash program or doing anything that would... Uh, we have uh, added, uh, I think it was $130 million to the uh, budget on space uh, several weeks ago which provides some speed up for Saturn, some speed up for Nova, some speed up for Rover. The, uh, and I will say that the budget for space uh, next year will be around uh, $2 billion. Now, uh, we are now uh, and have been for some time attempting to uh, make a determination as to uh, in developing larger boosters, whether the emphasis should be put on uh, chemical, nuclear rockets, or liquid fuel how much uh, this would cost, and uh, some of these programs uh, have been estimated to be between uh, 20 and 40 billion dollars. We are attempting to make a determination as to which program offers the best hope before we embark on it, because uh, you may commit a relatively small sum of money now for a result in 1967, eight or nine, which will cost you billions of dollars. And therefore, uh, the, space, the Congress passed yesterday the bill providing for Space Council, which will be chaired by the Vice President. We are attempting to make a determination as to which of these various proposals offers the best hope. And when that determination is made, we will then uh, make a recommendation to the Congress. In addition, we have to consider whether there is any program now, regardless of its cost, which offer us hope of being pioneers in a project. Uh, it's possible to spend uh, billions of dollars on this project in space uh, to the detriment of other programs and still not be successful. We are behind, as I've said before, in large boosters. We have to make a determination whether there is any effort we could make in time or money which could put us first in any new area. Now, I don't want to start uh, spending uh, the kind of money that I'm talking about without uh, making a determination based on careful scientific uh, judgments as to whether uh, a real success can be achieved, uh, or whether, because we're so far behind now, uh, this particular race is, uh, we're going to be second in in this uh, decade. So I will say to you that it's uh, a matter of uh, great concern, but uh, I think that before we break through and begin a program which would not reach a completion, as you know, until the end of this decade, for example, trips to the moon, maybe 10 years off, maybe a little less, but are quite far away and involve, as I say, enormous sum. I don't think we ought to rush into it and begin them until we really know where we're going to end up. And that study is now being undertaken under the direction of the Vice President. Well, Mr. President, uh, don't you agree we should try to get to the moon before the Russians if we can? If we can get to the moon uh, before the Russians, uh, we should. And isn't it your responsibility to apply the, uh, the, uh, the vigorous leadership uh, to spark up this program? When you say spark up the program, we first have to make a judgment based on the best information we can get whether we can be ahead of the Russians to the moon. We're now talking about a program which may be, uh, which are many years away. The Saturn is still on a 40-hour week, isn't it, Mr. President? We have, uh, as I say, uh, appropriated uh, $126 million more to the Saturn, and we are attempting to find out what else we can do. The Saturn is still going to put us well behind. Saturn the Saturn does not offer area. any hope of going to the, being first to the moon. The Saturn is several years behind the Soviet Union. I can just say to you that regardless of how much money we spend on the Saturn, the Saturn is going to put us, we're still going to be second. The question is whether the nuclear rocket or other kinds of chemical rockets offer us a better hope of making a jump forward. But we are second in the, uh, and the Saturn will not put us first. I, I want, however, to speed up, if we can, the Saturn, and uh, we, uh, the Vice President is now uh, leading a uh, study to see what we ought to do in this area. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President.
President, do you anticipate that there will be a vote in both houses of Congress this year on your medical care program? I don't uh, know. It, if we had a vote in the House, it would depend, of course, on the action of the Ways and Means Committee, so that I'm not, uh, I, I haven't any information yet as to whether we'll get a vote in the House. It's possible there'll be one in the Senate, which is not constricted by the same rules. There have been reports uh, on Capitol Hill that this administration has reconciled itself to uh, no vote on medical care this year. In either House? In the House, yes. In, in either body, in either House? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I haven't seen the reports, and uh, I would uh, not make that assumption. Right. Right. But I'm hopeful that we are dependent in the House on committee action. There can't be a vote in the House uh, without action by the committee and the, because of the rules of germaneness. The Senate, however, there's a somewhat different situation where there's no rule of germaneness. So it's possible that somebody might offer the bill in the Senate as an amendment to another bill. I don't know that yet, but there is very possible that you could get a vote in the Senate this year. The House is a different problem because we can't get a vote unless the Ways and Means Committee acts. Mr. President, your order to investigate uh, General Walker suggests that you look askance at the teachings of the John Birch Society. Can you tell us how you feel about that organization? Well, I don't think that their uh, judgments are uh, based on uh, accurate information of the kinds of challenges that uh, we face. I think we face an extremely serious and intensified struggle with the communists. But uh, I'm not sure that uh, the John Birch Society uh, is wrestling with the real problems which are created by the communists' advance around the world. I would uh, hope that uh, all those who are strong, who strongly are concerned about it, would address themselves to the kinds of problems which are created by Laos, Vietnam, by internal subversion, by the desperate uh, life lived by so many people in this hemisphere and in other places which the communists exploit. These are the kinds of problems which we are dealing with. I said something about them yesterday. The use which the communists make of uh, democratic freedoms and the success which they are able to, once they've seized power, the success with which they are able to maintain uh, their power against dissent. This seems to me to be the problem we've talked about and read stories of seven to 15,000 guerrillas operating in Vietnam, killing 2,000 civ civil officers a year, 2,000 police officers a year, 4,000. Now there's been an election in uh, Vietnam, in which 75% of the people, or 80%, to endorse the government. And yet we read how Vietnam is in danger because of guerrilla operations carried on by this small, well-disciplined, well-supplied across the border uh, group of uh, guerrillas. How we fight that kind of a problem, which is uh, going to be with us all through this decade, seems to me to be the one of the great problems now before the United States. And I would hope all those who are concerned about the advance of communism would face that problem and not uh, concern themselves with uh, the loyalty of President Eisenhower, or President Truman, or Mrs. Roosevelt, or myself, or someone else. President, your speech yesterday before the editors uh, intended to suggest another approach or a new departure in uh, the administration's dealing with the Russians. No, I, I didn't, uh, no. You have uh, practiced what uh, has been described as the quiet diplomacy approach, and uh, your speech yesterday seemed to suggest that you perhaps decided upon another approach. No, I wouldn't attempt to make a uh, judgment or response to that. I think that uh, I'm concerned about the kind of problem which I just described. I don't feel satisfied that we have an effective answer to it yet. Uh, and uh, I think it's a matter of uh, the greatest possible concern to all of us because I think events are moving with some speed. The, uh, the use which uh, the communists make of democracy and then uh, when they seize power, the effectiveness with which they manage the police apparatus so that uh, dissent cannot arise and uh, so that the people can no longer express their will, the liquidation by gunfire of the opposition or by forcing them out of the country to be refugees. This uh, suggests the kind of a problem which we're going to have in uh, this decade. And uh, 
in my judgment, it's an extremely uh, difficult matter for the uh, free nations to deal with. But uh, I must say that it, it's a matter to which we must address all of our energy and all of our attention. President, President. How would you, uh, sir, how would you evaluate the present state of your domestic program in Congress? I think we've done uh, better uh, recently. Yesterday, the Senate passed the uh, $1.25 cent minimum wage. There was action on aid to uh, dependent children and on Social Security. The vote in the Senate was uh, very ample on the minimum wage. I think there were only 28 votes against it. So that uh, I think that uh, at least yesterday there was a, uh, we made progress. How much more, sir, do you think needs to be done in order to uh, uh, give you a, a satisfactory <coughs> score on your, on your hope for legislative program? Well, I'm hopeful that we can move ahead on the various other uh, parts of the program, including education and housing. We are making progress on Social Security, distressed areas, and minimum wage. There may be other proposals which we might make to the Congress after we've considered, uh, completed our review of the economy and made a judgment as to exactly what peak or plateau the economy is going to reach this year. And that is what we're attempting to do now and to see whether any additional governmental programs may be necessary to encourage it. Yes, sir. Since last Saturday, a certain foreign policy situation has given rise to many conflicting stories. <coughs> During that time, reporters in Washington have noticed that there's been a clamming up of information from formerly useful sources. To my knowledge, the State Department and the White House has not attempted to take a representative group of reporters and say these are the facts as we know them. And this morning we are not permitted to ask any further questions about this foreign policy situation. In view of the fact we're taking a propaganda lambasting around the world, why is it not useful, sir, for us to explore with you the real facts behind this or our motivations? Well, I think in answer to your question that uh, we have to make a uh, judgment as to uh, how much we can usefully uh, say that would aid the uh, interest of the United States. One of the problems of a free society, problem not uh, met by a uh, dictatorship, is uh, this problem of uh, information. A good deal has been printed in the paper. I wouldn't be surprised if those of you who are members of the press will be, see will be receiving a lot of background briefings in the next uh, day or two by uh, interested uh, people or interested agencies. There's an old saying that uh, victory has a hundred fathers and defeat is an orphan. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, information is poured into you in regard to uh, all the recent activities. Now, uh, I think we see some of the problems uh, to move from this particular case in the problem of space where the Soviet Union, uh, no, no reports were made in regard to any experiments that they carried out, our man in space. I saw in a national magazine about uh, some student said uh, the Americans talk a good deal about their man in space. The Soviet Union says nothing, and yet it wins. Well, that is uh, one of the uh, problems of uh, a democracy competing and carrying on a uh, struggle for survival against a uh, dictatorship. But I will say to you, uh, Mr. Van Oka, that uh, I've said uh, as much as uh, I feel can be usefully said by me in regard to the events of the past few days. Through the statements, uh, detailed uh, discussions, uh, not to uh, conceal responsibility because I'm the responsible officer of the government, but merely because I, uh, and that is quite obvious, but merely because I do not uh, believe that uh, such a discussion uh, would benefit us during uh, the present uh, difficult uh, situation. But uh, as I say, I think you'll be informed and uh, some of the information based on what I've seen will not be accurate. Mr. President. Uh, have you any assurance your tax investment incentive plan is, will be supported in Congress? No, I think it will be a hard fight because the plan when it was set up uh, was intended to secure as much revenue as it as may have been uh, lost because of the tax credit plan. The tax credit plan put special emphasis on stimulating 
a new b industry and therefore a new employment. But in order to make up the revenues we lost by the tax credit plan, we've had to take control of uh, other revenues. And of course, those people are going to object. Uh, the expense accounts and the, t and the dividend credit and so on, so that uh, I think we'll have a hard fight. You, you've asked for it at this session. Do you think your educational program will be persuasive at this session? I hope so, uh, because I really believe that the tax credit program, in fact, the whole tax bill was carefully considered by people in the Treasury as well as the Council of Economic Advisors, had the strong support of uh, Mr. Dillon and others who have given this matter great consideration. I'm hopeful the Congress will respond favorably, but it is a technical matter. It involves important interest, and I think it will have a uh, be very soberly considered, which I hope it will be. But uh, I am hopeful it will pass, and I think it would be useful if it would. Mr. President, Mr. President are you contemplating uh, visiting any other countries besides France at your, on your trip at the end of May to see General de Gaulle? I'm planning uh, my only present plan is to go to France. There has been some talk of going to London, I understood, to christen uh, the Radswell baby. Well, that uh, has been uh, considered, but I've uh, not reached any uh, judgment on it. Uh, I think there's some interest by the family, and it would really be a question of whether we could, uh, whether it would be the uh, best thing to do. Yes. Would you explain the reason for the dropping of uh, espionage charges in Chicago recently against the Russian spy, Malik? And was that a part of a bargain for the RB-47 flyers? Uh, in answer to the last part of the question, it was not. There was no connection. The uh, dropping of the charges was made after an examination of the details of the case and of the uh, national interest, and it was felt that uh, it would be useful to uh, take the action we took. I'm sorry to can't be more responsive, but I will say it was not in regard to the RB-47 flyers. Mr. President? Yes. We have demonstrated a great capability in space and communications and meteorology. While these are not as dramatic as a man orbiting in space, there has been a strong feeling among scientists the world over that the country that would first develop a space telecommunication system to bring communications within the reach of every nation in the world at the price they could afford would make an even greater impact than the country that orbited man first in space. Are you considering putting more funds, because you, there has, you have cut some in both communications and meteorology, are you considering adding more funds? Yes, I believe uh, that uh, we have, uh, or are about to, if we haven't already done so, uh, put an additional, uh, and I just have to uh, go from memory now of uh, something, a decision made several weeks ago. I, I was, I'm under the impression that we decided to put uh, another 25 to $27 million into a communication uh, satellite so that uh, as part of this general program. Yes, uh, but uh, industry also has been interested in putting its funds in it, are, and there was uh, a, a statement by uh, Mr. Webb that uh, we weren't going to, at this point, uh, put any uh, of this program into industry's hands until we had investigated further. Since they're willing to spend money, are you considering perhaps allowing them to share the cost and advance Well, if they the want to, if they, I don't know enough about the matter to give you a, a detailed answer, except I do know that we did put an additional sum of money for a, a communication satellite amounting to the sum that I suggested there. Now, if there are any other further things that can be done or if anybody else wants to put their money into it, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Webb would be agreeable, but uh, I must say, from examining this and other programs, I find that uh, the government puts most of the money into them. Do you, in, do you intend to send Vice President Johnson to Southeast Asia soon? We have been uh, considering uh, the Vice President going to Southeast Asia. And I think a decision will be reached on that in the next, uh, perhaps over the weekend or the next few days. Mr. Roberts? Uh, uh, given the stress that you put this morning and in recent days on this problem of fighting the uh, indirect communist <coughs> tactics. Uh, do you still, and also given the rather harsh language out of Moscow, including Mr. Khrushchev's note to you, do you still feel that it is useful to go ahead with efforts at the diplomatic level to negotiate formal agreements with the Soviet government? 
Well, we still continue to hope that some agreement could be reached on a cessation of nuclear tests. We are, of course, uh, very uh, discouraged by the newest insistence of the Soviets on a veto. It's quite obvious that uh, the Senate would not accept such a treaty, nor would I send it to the Senate, because the inspection system then would not uh, provide any guarantees at all. Now, I noticed the uh, language uh, used by Mr. Khrushchev himself, not merely one of his representatives in Mr. Lippmann's article, that, uh, and his strong uh, insistence on the tripartite and on unanimous agreement in regard to the inspection system. I'm hopeful that uh, there may be a change in that, but if there isn't a change in that position, it's going to be very hard to get an agreement. And, uh, but I sh believe that Mr. Dean should continue, because uh, if this the test conversation should break up, then, of course, our hopes of getting any agreement on disarmament would be substantially lessened, and uh, we could look for a uh, proliferation of uh, atomic testing in other countries, so that I feel that Mr. Dean should continue, though we have been discouraged by uh, the Russian position. Well, do you feel, sir, that, it's, that it is possible to have really a two-level uh, operation here, uh, an undeclared kind of warfare, which you have been talking about, and yet a formalized effort, not only in the test ban negotiations, but in terms of exchanges uh, and uh, other types of negotiations. Are these two things com compatible? The uh, incompatibility may rest in the fact that it's hard to get an agreement on any matter when there is a suspicion and uh, between the two systems and when uh, one of the systems are pressing their interest uh, with great vigor around the world. It makes the chances of getting any agreement uh, far less. I thought the best uh, hope was the nuclear testing, even though that it was always true that uh, the obstacles were large. But uh, if there is any chance at all of getting an agreement on a cessation of nuclear tests, Regardless of uh, what appears to be the obstacles, I think we should uh, press on. So in answer to your question, I still believe that Mr. Dean should continue to work at Geneva. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.